Hello, listeners, and welcome to Episode Zero of the Bachelors of Dice podcast, a podcast about Marvel Dice Masters, Avengers vs. X-Men, the brand new dice building game from WizKids. I'm one of your co-hosts, Kevin, and with me are... Jesse and Adam. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Um, brief little gaming history or introductions, I guess, are in order. Um, my name's Kevin. I live in New Jersey. It's better than it than you think. Uh, in the U.S. of A. And brief, brief gaming history for me started like pretty much anybody else. Uh, Ticket to Ride was my gateway drug and never really got into collectible games too much, but for whatever reason, Marvel Dice Masters is really scratching all itches and I'm pretty excited for it. Jesse, how about you? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I don't know. I'm board game-wise, I kind of go back a little... A little earlier, I remember getting games for Christmas and birthdays when I was a kid. Like, I had this Goosebumps game that was really awesome. <laughs> and uh, Fireball Island. Oh, yes, a classic. Like, yeah, I was, that's kind of what started me. And then there was kind of a little hiatus while I was in, like, middle school, high school area. And then Settlers of Catan was actually my my gateway drug. But I can't even touch that game anymore. <laughs> Very nice. And Adam, how'd, how'd you get into gaming? Uh, same. Little kid getting board games when I was younger. I think my first was Shoots and Ladders, like most younger kids. Right. Um, and I guess my gateway one was um, Wrath of the Shardalon, which is newer, but yeah, this would be my first collectible game. Other than when I was younger, I was buying Dragon Ball Z Any Mayhem card games, which I never did play, but yeah, this was my very first one technically. Okay, very cool. All right, well, for listeners at home, a brief kind of overview of what this podcast is about. It's about the Marvel Dice Masters game. And as the game gets released and as we go down the line, you know, maybe it'll expand into other avenues. But right now we're all really jazzed for this new Marvel Dice Masters game. So that's what we're going to kind of focus on. Right now we're going to talk about the news uh, that we've heard about this game so far, which... Uh, has reached a, kind of a fevered pitch as the release date is now less than a week away. I guess the official street date is April 23rd, which is next Wednesday, correct? Yeah. Yep. Although, I guess if you trace the history of this game, it was originally supposed to come out when last fall sometime. I think November was the first day I heard about it. Yeah, that, I think that was about... I think I heard about it. And then it was December after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then it was March, and then in March it became April, and and we're on track now. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we are on the verge of of finally getting it into our hands, which I, I think we're all very excited about. So yeah, I'll go right out and ask, uh, what have you guys ordered? What are you gonna What are you gonna buy? Starters, boosters, what? Uh, I want Adam to go first, so I'm less embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> um, as of right now, I've ordered one starter kit and 15 boosters, but I have no problem with buying a whole gravity feed if it's there. And then I'll probably be getting, um, I think, two more stars, one to keep, as a keepsake and one for a friend. Okay, nice. very cool. And, uh, yeah, I want Jesse to go last because I'm pretty sure I, I know that he's probably the <laughs> most. Uh, I ordered, I pre-ordered um, one starter, and actually I did pre-order two gravities. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them all for myself or end up uh, giving to a couple friends of mine. Nice. As I've actually been over the last few days trying to calculate what I actually ordered. Because oh <laughs> I've like placed a bunch of orders at different places. Um, but I think in total we have nine gravity feeds oh, and yeah. 15 starters ordered. But I would like to preface that by saying like I that is not all for me. Um, oh, I think that's been amongst me, how many people? Uh, nine guys, which is incredible oh. for my game group. Like they don't buy any games. They don't. They don't even touch CCGs or anything like that. Do you think it's the price point? I yeah, I definitely do. I mean, um, I've tried in the past getting them into some games, and like, I mean, they enjoy them, but there's like, uh, it's too much to invest. And for like fifteen bucks for a starter that you can play just with that, and then I feel like you can throw in one dollar boosters. Like that's. You can't really say no, especially if you're a big Marvel fan like most of my friends. 
Yeah, that price point is a, a pretty genius move by them because when I heard about the game and they said, it's Marvel, it's Dice, I said, okay, I'm, I'm listening. And then they said, it's $15 with dollar booster packs. I said, wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty sounds like a pretty good deal. Now, obviously, we've gotten more and more information about what you're actually getting for your money, and you know we can debate the merits of the, the what the starter box actually comes with uh, for for what you're paying. But still, for a very basic game, yeah, fifteen dollars is, is throw that down, try it out. You like it, so what? You're out fifteen bucks, or, or you can resell it. It's not a big deal. I think it's a it's a great move. Yeah, I agree. Um, I I think I read somewhere, some forum somewhere, about a WizKids post saying that they, their, I guess, someone up in their organization was telling them, I guess accounting or something was telling them that this was like a really bad move for them to like sell them so cheap. And I thought that was kind of interesting that they decided to go ahead with it anyways. Oh, uh, that might have been in their Gamma trade show presentation? Yeah, I think that's where it came from. Yes, it definitely was. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, the Gamma Trade Show is a trade show that happens in Las Vegas every March, I believe, uh, where publishers and game uh, stores essentially all gather and go over the upcoming year and what they're going to be pushing and release of product information and WizKids presentation included, uh, I guess, a pretty extensive uh, display of what the Dice Masters game is all about and how it kind of came to fruition. Right. Uh, you can, uh, we'll probably link, well, when we publish some show notes, uh, we can put a link to the, the Gamma Trade Show presentation that was leaked. It'll definitely be up there, yeah. So getting into, I guess, how we came together, um, it really speaks to the game, I think, itself and the excitement and the hype that is generated. I, for one, am not much for podcasting. I, I've actually just started listening to podcasts over the past year. Um, Listen to the Dice Tower and uh, a couple podcasts about the Lord of the Rings card game and thought, you know, this game is, is right up my alley. Marvel, check, dice, check, cards, team building, check, check. Yeah, it really scratched a lot of itches, and so I got so excited about it that I wanted to share that with the masses and so scouring after posting several posts on board game geek with the username jerkules by the way um i came across a couple other people i came across jesse and emailed him uh through board game geek said to him you know what would you think about doing a podcast about this awesome new game that we're both excited about Jesse responded, hey, it just so happens I just bought a mic and was thinking about doing that as well. So I think this uh, this podcast was meant to be. It was in the stars. <laughs> it's true. When Jesse uh, messaged me, I was all for it because I had already been planning to do something similar. So it was nice to have people already looking to do it and then inviting me to join them. Yeah, I'm, I remember when I, me and... Kevin, we're emailing each other back and forth just about initial stuff and ideas and just trying to see what, what pages he was on or what kind of things he wanted to do. And I was like, well, this would probably be better with at least another guy. And then we started discuss like, I was just saying, maybe we should invite someone else. So I was, like, scouring Board Game Geek for somebody. I'm like, this guy's got to be, like, nice. Like, none of those troll guys that are, like, really pumped for the game, but they're just mean. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, maybe this guy, he's Canadian, he's got to be polite and nice. So I messaged Adam. It's worked out pretty good, I think, so far. Yeah, um, I, I think, uh, and, and we're certainly not against including more people, so if there's anybody out there that is interested in joining the podcast, Pete, please feel free to email us, and uh, yeah, the more the merrier, I think. Even if you want to just join us for like one one-time shot, or just come in and just discuss a certain topic. We could do that too. It does not to be like a permanent thing. Yeah, the the goal of this is to foster a community of people that are excited about this game and want to learn more about this game or talk about the game or hear about the game, whatever it is. Um, 
I mean, sure, we can get into the controversial topics of collectability and whatnot, although I think a lot of that has been beaten to death on board game geek forums. But regardless, uh, it's not something that we can probably ignore either. Right. I'm actually kind of happy that most of it's kind of died down. All the haters have kind of given up. Just kind of yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm sure it'll still kind of come back around at some point in time. But you know, we're not we're not here to do that today. So uh, what we can do though right now is I guess move on to just the generic excitement for the game, the hype that is being generated, and um, go over some of the avenues that we've kind of used to uh, I don't know quench our thirst for the game, which I guess the the simplest version of that has been the the watch it played videos. I'm assuming you guys have watched all of those multiple times at this point. More than I could actually count, and that's not even <laughs> a joke. Showing friends, family, coworkers, <laughs> <laughs> let them know you have to buy this game. Pre-order it now. Yeah, I watched. Um, yeah, I watched them both quite a few times. Actually, it's funny. The day that. Tom posted a video was the day that, like, I had forgotten about the game from, like, January on to, like, March. I was like, this game's never going to happen, and uh, I just gave up on it. And then Tom posted that video, and I'm like, well, this is proof that this game exists. And then <laughs> I got so pumped again, I watched that video, like, three times that day. <laughs> Are you talking about, you're talking about the Dice Tower? Yeah, Dice Tower, Tom Vessels. The review video for it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. that's what it, I think that was the first thing he did on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yes. The first way that I saw the videos was on my YouTube feed for Watch It Played, and then I watched those videos over and over again. And I had to go to Board Game Geek and see the other videos, which was Tom's was on there as well. Right. Now they haven't done any more Watch It Played since I guess mid March, right? It's the second. Uh, I was the tournament rules, and then. The Nightcrawler correction video was the last one. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't even see that. It was a correction for Nightcrawler when he blocked. Right. He also hit the his health, which shouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah, I kind of assumed. Um, my, like, I don't know if I talked with you guys about it, but I used to play Magic the Gathering quite a bit. So that's kind of what I use in my mindset. Anytime I read cards, I always think, well, how would it work in Magic? So... I don't know, that's probably going to be a detriment, but... <laughs> there should be, uh, yes, yeah, significant rules lawyering for this game as far as timing goes. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the rules try to make it pretty clear uh, about when timing of things occurs, but I'm sure exceptions will arise and several questions will come up, so... It seems pretty straightforward with their rule right now where it's whoever's turn it is goes first when there's two people that want to do something, which I'm not... 100% sure on how I feel about it, but it at least will make it easy to decide who gets to do what when. Yeah, because you'll probably have two people who want to use a global ability, but probably a different global ability at the same time, so... Sure. And that's probably going to be the biggest instance, right? That if the the receiver who's defending goes to use their global ability, and then you, the attacker, say, no, 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 wait, I'm going to use mine, then he gets priority right away, and then that's probably going to make it difficult for some. Yeah. Now, is has anybody sent Rodney any angry emails about why he hasn't posted more Watch It Play videos for Marvel <laughs> Dice <Dicement? laughs> I um, I think I reply to a video, and I might have – I think I messaged him as well, asking for more. <laughs> Yeah, I, that, that guy has a lot of videos to create, so I guess I don't blame him, but certainly uh, sour to him for not uh, not producing more of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more of him saying, "No, you didn't. You don't know this, but we had three more matches before this, and it's like, why didn't you record them?" Yeah, <laughs> I don't care if they're not edited. I just want to see more footage of the game he played, like more heroes, more stuff happening, right? Mm-hmm. I think I've watched his videos enough times I can now quote them for different <laughs> parts that actually happen that you know are going to happen. You're like, oh, Punisher, yes. Like, oh, no, he's going to roll that. He's going to roll his guy. Oh, it's going over. <laughs> you know what would be great right now? If you pulled out four sidekicks. <laughs> oh, it's going to it's totally get Oh, it happened again. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think I've watched Rodney's videos that many times. but <laughs> Yeah, he's got those nice play mats, too. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting. 
I've been wondering, do you guys... Uh, I was looking at them originally, because I think Tom also has the same ones in his that he uses in his videos. Tom has one pre-production, then one retail, it looks like. Right, because if you look at both videos... They both like they have both players are using mats, but the both mats are different, right? Yeah. So is is one are they both made out of paper? The um the one that isn't rounded on the edges is a pre production um for showing people how to play the game because it has the arrows okay. with the tips inside them. But then the vinyl one doesn't have that and also doesn't have a KO area because that was right. just to show for people learning as well. I guess you don't necessarily need a KO area. No, because it goes into the prep area anyways. Like, immediately. Mm -hmm. I still like the KO area myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind it. I don't know, maybe something will, a mechanic will come down the road where the dice will sit there in limbo for a few more moments. Or Yeah, I, I could see uh, characters in the future somehow playing off that temporarily. So um, I should ask, if while we're on the... The topic of play mats. Do you did you guys order any or make any or what's your what's you guys' plans for what you're going to be playing on? I I ordered two mouse pads from Cow Cow, <laughs> which I know is a sensitive subject <laughs> for some people. Who's uh, Cow Cow? I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that before. Um, I actually already received them, so that was good. The quality was about what I would expect from paying four dollars for two mouse pads, uh, so I really can't complain. Um, but Adam, what, what about you? Did you do the same thing? or? Yeah, um, I got I already got my two Cow Cow mouse pads as well. Um, and then on today, I just ordered one from the Ink Playmats as well. And then I also have the official Playmat on order through my game store. Okay. Cool. Very nice. I have many options. Nice. And Jesse, would you like to sound off here or no? Not so much? No, I'll, I'll chip in mine. Um, I originally ordered from Ink Play Mats. I've already gotten mine, and it looks awesome. Um, Adam actually did all the work on it, so thanks for that. Oh, no problem. Um, and then, yeah, I ordered, I think, like, 12 of them on Cow Cow. Actually, I, I should say right now this is, like, foreshadowing for, like, what happened to me later because I ordered, like, 12. And I used some code, and they, the total was like 120 bucks, and I paid like 20 dollars for them all. <laughs> so like they probably were a little disappointed that they didn't make a little more coin off me. And then I still haven't seen them, and they're somewhere in limbo between Hong Kong and here, and they've been sent back and forth like two, two, two or three times. Oh wow! So one day they'll get here, maybe. I hope. Oh, but speaking of the graphics, you mentioned Adam has done the graphic for the ones that you ordered. You've done a couple different graphics, right, Adam? I've, yeah, I've done, oh, wow, like probably. Cillian? Yeah, it, it <laughs> feels like it. I've done a bunch that, um, that I've just posted to the files or posted in different playmat uh, topics because there's a few of them. So I've actually lost track. How many guys have emailed you about doing one for a custom one? Eleven, I think. Well, that's, that's considerably lower than I would have guessed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 11 people, but multiple ones. So um, I know I did... Um, right. There's a Voltron one for one guy where she asked me to do five different images, which was easy because the template that I made is literally just sliding the image inside right. of it and then saving it for him, which you can now do yourself because that template's on um, the Board Game Geek's file system, which you can just download. And if you know how to use Photoshop, it's really simple. Steps are right there. Same with the mouse pads, too. Okay. Very cool. Uh, what are your guys' usernames on Board Game Geek, just so everybody knows? Silence. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm Jerkules, in case anybody didn't catch that before. But, Jesse, you are? I'm just my name, actually. It's Jesse Olivier. Um, okay. We, sh we could link our, our names in there as well. Okay. Yeah, good so call. people could uh, put a sort of a face to our voices, even though we don't have our face on Board Game Geek. <laughs> A voice to a voice, I guess. Yep, and then mine is Z E R O E O. Zero E O. Some people people pronounce it Zero, which isn't right, but just Zero E O, which is confusing. So that's the proper pronunciation is Zero E O. Zero E O. I know it's hard to say, yes. <laughs> that is. <laughs> okay, very cool. Uh, okay, so one of the things I was going to bring up was I know the answer to this question already, but have you guys had a chance to play the game yet? I have not. I haven't had my hands on anything yet. Um, I also haven't. I have not physically touched the dice. <laughs> <laughs> but I well, know I will be able to play it sooner than later. Yeah, the good news, for me anyway, <laughs> is that the local gaming store that I'll be going to 
actually did get a pre-production copy um, to generate hype, I guess, in their store. And it just so happened a couple weeks ago that I got a chance to stop by and the owner was nice enough to, to show me a, a really quick game. And all we did was play the basic game with two characters and three action cards. And I won't go into a long, drawn-out, detailed uh, play-by-play analysis of it, but my overall impression was very favorable. <laughs> I can say that much. And I'm guessing the dice themselves were pre-production, just because I did notice some maybe a little bit of um, paint fading, which I guess could be because he was just using them nonstop to show people in the store, but I'm hoping it's more because they were pre-production dice. But yeah, the gameplay itself was exactly what I kind of hoped it would be, and is I'm it just maybe more excited to to try out the game. Yeah, next week can't come soon enough. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that their pre-production sent out to the stores. I thought each store just got sent a normal starter. Uh, well, yeah, that and that could be. I, I don't know if it was. They just rushed several starters and got them out to stores, or if they were mm. unofficially pre-production copies. I, yeah, I, I'm totally making that up, uh, or I, I very well could be. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there because I was like, I, I just all those um, posts on Board Game Geek about the quality of the dice from all from people who've tested it out from their local stores. So I was wondering, oh, maybe that's oh, just okay. because they were. Pre-production. I don't want to spread any rumors here, but no, that's that's a good point. I do want to spread rumors <laughs> <laughs> because if those dice show up and yeah, they, they do so think quickly, then I'll yeah, I'll be a little bit bummed, I guess. So you heard it here, folks. First, <laughs> somebody <laughs> needs to invent dice sleeves. I think laminate the dice. <laughs> that might be the way to go. Did he have a rule booklet with him in like the actual packaging, or is it like just in a cardboard container? Uh, he had everything in just a little cardboard container. So very yeah. well could be a pre-production then. Yeah, yeah it sounds I don't like think it. he actually did have a, a starter box. I think he had the rule book, um, but yeah, everything he had was in like a very small mailer box, really. Hmm. So I just kind of assumed that that's what it came in. Have you guys, um, either of you, found out if you're going to be doing organized play at your game stores yet? I am. For sure I am. I hounded my local game store like no other. He was like, oh, I don't know. I don't even know if I'll carry it. And now he's like so gung-ho about the game. And he's like, yeah, we're going to play this like every week. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I actually yeah. went into two different stores in my area. And one of them I didn't even really know was a game store until I stopped in it and mentioned the game to them. And they knew nothing about it. And the other store I stopped at, they told me before I could even mention it, they told me about the game. And so I kind of played it off like, Oh yeah, what's this game? I haven't heard of it. Oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> and kind of let him go on and on. And so then towards the end of the conversation, I asked, well, you know, is there going to be any organized events for this? Oh yeah, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of people. We're going to generate a Facebook group of interested players. And, you know, all my board game guys are very excited about it. All my magic guys are excited about it. So this is a real, big melding nice. of the world so it uh yeah it sounds like this game store is ready to go and now i'm kind of worried that i'm going to be late to the party and miss out on some of these uh some of these promos i know that's the one nice, nice thing about my game store is most of the guys are going to be taking part at least in the early tournament um organized play stuff will just be my friends so <laughs> one of us is coming home with uh, the the exclusive card Nice. And I'm really hoping that I can just, I'll just trade them for it. I'll be like, hey, guys, <laughs> listen up. You wouldn't have known about this game if it wasn't for me. <laughs> I think there's actually a few exclusive cards for the organized play as well. There's uh, the the Phoenix Force is the grand prize, but every um, of the six organized play kits, there's going to be, I think, three participant cards. Oh, okay. oh really? From what I read, yeah. I, my understanding is, say, week one, there'll be, because each kit comes with 11 cards, is mm-hmm. my understanding. So, okay. And it's, and it's 10 players it supports, so I just assume from that that 10 of the cards are everyone gets one, they're like an action card. Right. And, and then whoever wins gets that that one variant art I get I think it's variant art from a hero okay that's that's what I I think I read so 
I think there's just one different card plus a new action card. And then, yeah, and then the Phoenix Force, which I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. Like, is one person going to get the Phoenix Force in the whole world? Or are they, like, each store is going to get sent one based upon previous play? Or, like, I have no idea how that's going to work. Yeah, I imagine it would be something like if you participated in all six, I guess it's a six-month cycle. Right, yes. Um, So if you participated in all six of those months, you'll probably get the Phoenix Force at the end of that cycle. You mean, like, every every person or what? Every, whoever, whatever store is participating for all six oh, months. Oh, I see, I see, I see. When they order that sixth month, they'll get that bonus card as well. I Phoenix think. Force. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm assuming, but I guess we'll have to kind of wait yeah, and well, see how it plays out. That would be awesome, Phoenix Force. Because yeah. it comes with a dice too, right? Yes, it does. I'm just looking it up really quickly. I'm really interested to see if that Phoenix Force is, like, max one dice per team, and then see if there'll be, like, hoarding of the exclusive Phoenix Force. Guys trying to eBay them up. (laughs) Almost likely, yeah. Um, Month six comes with ten limited edition cards for participating, three limited edition cards uh, for prizes, and then three limited edition card and corresponding dice for the grand prize. Oh, there you go. Very good. Yeah, the secondary market is, uh, I mean, we just touched on it briefly, but I'm very curious to see how that's going to play out because I know a lot of people have already basically said, all right, you know, I'll I'll trade whatever. I'm not going to be married to keeping anything, and I think that's going to be the case for a lot of people. Although I also wonder if some people are going to be collecting to try and get, like, two sets so that they can play and they can play against their friends who might not want to invest in the game. For sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's actually originally the route that I thought I was going to go because that's kind of just how I've always been. But then with all my friends buying in, I'm like, well, finally I can like have other people buy. So it's a little more interesting when you have your friends doing it too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Secondary market is definitely going to be something that I'll be using probably a, a few different ways. <laughs> And then, obviously, the, ne- the the question that goes with that is the actual distribution, which everybody is kind of speculating at this point. Obviously, WizKids, I believe, has said it's not the same type of distribution that you would expect of a, a collectible game. But it's a little better for the players. What exactly that translates to, you know, again, have to wait and see. Right. And I think, from my experience in, like, collectible realm games... It's even with, like, the rares aren't always necessarily the most expensive cards. Like, a common could be really powerful, and then its price and value on the secondary market increases quite a bit. Like, I I would wager that most Deadpool cards will probably be some of the more expensive ones just due to his popularity. Mm. Yeah, no, I didn't even think about the the popularity factor. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like... Most people like Wolverine, and oh, he yeah. probably won't be, like, one of those rock-bottom, like, like a, a Green Goblin, I would say, or a Doc Ock will probably not be, like, a highly sought after, like, oh, I really need a, I really need that Doc Ock card. Right. But, um, I mean, like, if you even just look at some of, the, like, the Deadpool hero clicks also made by WizKids, like, you won't find one under 10 bucks. Hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, interesting. I guess. Uh, and with Wolverine being one of the few that has an ultra rare card too. Right, for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of curious how some of those decisions were made. Like the four ultra rares, they have a Black Widow, a Green Goblin, Mister Fantastic, and Wolverine. Like why they why they chose those heroes? Yeah, I can understand Wolverine completely. The other three, I'm like, oh, okay. I know you'd think Spider Man would be on there. Like honestly. Yeah. If they had thrown in Deadpool as a super rare, I guarantee people would have bought more boosters. Because mm. mm-hmm. like, people would be hunting for it. Like Most people who would say, oh, I don't really like to hunt, Like they might actually double think that and buy a few more maybe. I don't know. That's my personal so opinion. If anybody from WizKids is listening to this, you screwed yourself out of money <laughs> <laughs> by not making Deadpool rare. At the end of the day, Deadpool Super. will make you more money. <laughs> it's true. Deadpool equals money. Now, I don't do a lot of the collectible stuff, so this is an honest question. Um, has WizKids ever made, like, carrying cases for any of their games, like uh, Hero Clicks or anything? I don't think so. I mean, 
uh, I think I've been a, a voice in Board Game Geek that's kind of preached that you can't approach this like most mm-hmm. board games. And, like, if you even look at, like, a Magic the Gathering, they don't even really make, like, big Magic the Gathering boxes for your collections, right? Like, there's kind of that third market stuff that, that you just buy. So um, I, I'm pretty sure... I, I, Pretty sure Heroclix they didn't do anything, or even any of their other miniature games. And I, w- I wouldn't expect there to be anything. I was actually surprised that they had made their own playmat, to be honest. Yeah, I think that was actually a, a, a good move, and I'm glad they did, because that, that does look look pretty neat and pretty useful. For sure. It brings more order to the layout instead of having to use your imagination, looking at sectors in front of you. Oh, man. It's so that's one of the biggest um, confusions for my friends who play, like, Warriors. They can never remember which zone is what or what just based upon their names. But if you have it laid out, you'll it's much easier to remember or where to place things. I thought it was a good idea. Mm-hmm. Now, one avenue that we could explore in a future episode is the metagame that's going to be involved in this. In a tournament format, would you bring nothing and make it look like, oh, I just took <laughs> up this game? Or would you bring all your stuff, like all your pimped out things, about it and be like, yeah, look, this is what I've got, and now I'm going to throw down. <laughs> wow, I never even thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. I should like just go with like my paper bag that comes with the starter. Rope dope, totally rope dope. Like, who's this fool playing with this paper bag with this <laughs> awesome team? Um, but yeah, we we touched on the Phoenix Force card being the the mega prize at the end of the organized play. Um, are there any other characters or dice or cards that you've kind of that have been spoiled that you are super excited to either just hold in your hands or try out in play or any of that stuff? Luckily, I haven't looked too much into the details of all the cards. I'm I'm excited to get all of them that I get in my Star Kid and the um, boosters just to see what kind of combos I can create. And I think that's really going to be the exciting part of it, being able to actually roll it and pull off a combo that you thought up yourself. That is such a political answer. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to say that I'm really excited to play with the Hulk. (laughs) Okay, okay. Um, Combo-wise, actually, when I was reading through the list, I thought a lot of the shield-based energy guys, like, they kind of synergized well. You could probably throw any shield guy in, and all the abilities are all, like, if you have a shield energy or whatever. I thought those guys worked well. But I'm really pumped for Hulk. And the next expansion heroes <laughs> that weren't put into this one. Now, is Hulk your favorite Marvel character in general, or? Um, actually, I am X Men all the way. Always oh. have been. Yeah. But I I love the Hulk quite a bit. I'm actually more of a Red Hulk fan than than Green Hulk, but. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I'll say that um, even though from what I've read about Colossus's cards doesn't necessarily excite me um, since he is one of my favorite X-Men. I'm just excited to get him out on the table and, and see how it goes. Actually, now that you mention that, I'd like to push back. There's, there's, <laughs> there is one Colossus card that I think sounded really awesome. Um, he, something to the effect of what, whenever, I think it's like the start of your turn, um, every one of your level two guys or level three guys deals two damage to the the opponent. Oh, mm-hmm. that that seemed pretty neat. So if you mm-hmm. use a strategy like um, I don't remember the action card's name, that you can spin up your dice, so you could kind of level up all your guys and just never attack or defend with them. You just focus power. Focus spin power. one target character up or down one level. There you go. I don't know. That was an idea. Yeah. No. I. That's a. You just discovered a, a great combo right there. You never know yeah. if anything is good until you actually try it. But yeah, well, sounds good. When you mentioned the um, the Avengers, automatically I thought about the whole you bring out Nick Fury. Any Avengers that you roll, you you field them for free, so you get Captain America out, and then I think he gives each um, pawn or sidekick a plus one to attack and defense. Cap does, and so does Green Goblin, I believe. Oh, he does as well. I think so. I think there is a Green Goblin that makes makes them stronger as well. Okay. Yeah, that Nick Fury die that allows you to field Avengers for free is, is pretty neat. Whether or not the Avengers are going to be cheap enough. Yeah, I was going to say, well, just spiraling off of that topic, 
my specific answer was Colossus, but my generic answer was um, I'm excited to see any die that costs more than, I'd say, five. So any yeah. die that costs six or seven, I'm really curious to see how many of them really come into play in the course of a game. Mm-hmm. We talked about this before, didn't we, briefly? Yeah, possibly. That's that's exactly what that I'm thinking. That's like the one big question about this game for me is it seems it moves really fast. And how often are you really going to be able to afford a, a five or six cost guy and actually field him, right? Like maybe your last few turns of the game. And if that, you'll only be getting one. What was the highest cost? Was it nine? Seven. Seven? Seven, I think. Yeah, I believe it's seven. Okay. That would come down to buying um, the action cards, cause those, or the action dice, sorry, because those give you two. Right. I think is a higher chance. And, of course, the character dice. Well, yeah, I think, I guess the way to go about that would be to, you know, throw out a lot of cheap defenders and give yourself time to build up to, to buy those those expensive guys, whether or not you can do that, I guess, depends on what your opponent is fielding. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, another part of the metagame that it could be interesting. But the good news is you have eight characters to spread across, and I don't see many games where you're going to be using necessarily all eight of them. So you could easily throw a die or two into your mix just as a, well, one, if the game goes this yeah, way, I'm going to need these dice. dice. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I was rereading the rules the other day, and I noticed that you even they, they leave the option open to you don't have to have eight heroes either. So huh. you don't have to have an eight hero with one dice just because you have to have eight. Like you're allowed to have six and or hmm. even five and have them all maxed out. Oh, okay. No, I didn't even I didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't see that part. It'd be interesting seeing someone max out Colossus when it's seven. <laughs> and actually have it work. Yeah. Have four, have four. I'm gonna assume four out at a time. Right. I actually um I read that on Wiz. What, what's the website called? Um, it's Marvel Dice Masters website. I think it's just called DiceMasters.com. Yeah, it's just DiceMasters.com. And, and they have a tabs. It's a really bare bones website, but under uh, like tournaments, I think it is. They have all their like tournament rules. Mm-hmm. So I would. Probably, I usually take tournament rules to be the base rules for how you want to build a team. Well, um, one other question I actually thought of was, how good do you plan on being at this, at this game? Because I don't plan on being very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think plan on and realistically how good I will be is two different things. I mean, one of the ex- I am definitely excited to try out all the various combinations and play all the characters and make it thematic team here and uh you know go to tournaments and get my ass handed to me whatever I, I, i'm excited about it all unfortunately I, I knowing how i am i'm not sure that's going to translate into playing very well ever but uh but damned if i won't have a good time doing it <laughs> right yeah i have uh i have a friend who's um What's the the nicest or the easiest way to say this? He's very uh, read up on strategies and, like, current metagame. And, I mean, I've introduced him, say, to, like, Magic. And, like, I've been playing this for, like, 15 years. And then after, like, a few months, this guy knows, like, everything about all the new cards. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know all this stuff that I don't know. So I don't think I'll be like that. Like, I'm kind of just, like, the casual guy that is really into the game, but actually doesn't spend that much time outside of actually playing it, reading up or learning what's good. I know I've never really looked into metagame for any games that I've done, so it'll be interesting, because I feel like I always like to do my own strategies instead of reading up on how other people think I should play or you should play. For sure. Using certain characters. I mean, the biggest part of the metagame that you would consider, I, I would think, is, like, if you were to play in the local organized play stuff and you kind of knew the guys that were playing there and you kind of knew what kind of teams they were running you might throw in certain dice for example like uh, Mjolnir or Mjolnir <laughs> um, the hammer yeah the big thunder hammer thing that mm-hmm. that's really strong against villains if you knew a guy was playing lots of villains you might want to run one of those right yeah but yeah I totally get you I'm Definitely not. I'm more of, I want to make up my own strategies or play with my favorite heroes and try to make a strategy work with them or something like that. I think um, when I play, I'm going to have Storm filled 
just to psych them out, to make them think I'm going to re-roll their dice on them. And then never buy any? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read all the strategies and then stupidly find ways to try and break them, even though I'll probably fail at doing that. Nice. Um, I know you guys don't have that much experience in uh, collectible games, but my kind of play style is to try to find the most annoying way to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of learned this from my wife playing board games. Um, she has this one strategy if we're playing a game that's maybe a little longer than a 90 minutes. She'll kind of take turns really slow and kind of just draw it out and make me bored of the game so that I just don't want to play anymore, and then she can beat me. So I lose interest. So I kind of, that's how I developed that strategy. Annoying people works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess they say there are time limits. There are going to be time limits on tournament games? I think so. I would assume so, because you can't just yeah. have one game go for 40 minutes. Although it might be epic to watch that. Uh, if it was yeah, actually also... taking that long? Right. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. I'm sure there will be epic games, though, so... Uh... I'm excited to, to see those, too. All right. Well, um, we don't have to cover all the topics. I think we've kind of covered a bunch and touched on a few. i got to save something for, uh, for Episode 1 and 2 and beyond. So if we want to kind of call it there, unless anybody wants to touch on anything else. Um, I thought it might be worth uh, talking about where we're going or what, what people could expect in the next few episodes. Or Absolutely. Yeah. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, we're going to obviously develop uh, a, a plan for each uh, episode going forward. I think the very next one that we record will be hopefully within the next – or within a week after the release, after we've all had a chance to, to open up and, and play the game a couple times and then give initial impressions on the starter set, you know, maybe some fun stories of – opening a booster to discover two commons and getting incredibly disappointed <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. And um, and then maybe doing a, a card review of some of the characters or all the characters or all the action cards or, or something. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different topics that we can cover. I think the next one, or at least my thoughts were to to talk about our initial play impressions after the game finally arrives. For sure, in the, de- in the next one. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm, I'm thinking. I talked to you guys a little bit about it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be us, but uh, I've always been interested in kind of creating an online community for games. In this game, originally was a game that I thought I wouldn't get much play out of directly through my friends, but um, yeah, I was thinking about maybe playing some games through online Skype, and then it kind of evolved into maybe we could play some North America worldwide type matches and film them and edit it all up and post it on the Geek or YouTube or whatever and kind of do see see how that goes. So that's kind of one area that I personally gonna look into. And I don't I don't know if you guys are interested in taking part in that. Absolutely, I definitely am. Um, even some multiplayer games, and uh, that'd be. Interest. Oh, that's what I'm mostly interested in to see see how that would play out. When you say multiplayer, you mean more than two, right? So obviously we'd have to tinker with with a variant variant of the rules. But I've I've some decent ideas of what to do there. So I think uh, our intent is to set up a YouTube page if we haven't already. Uh, I, I'll post a link to it. It's pretty bare bones right now. Maybe in a few weeks or something, we'll link a, a video. And yeah, because I think once we all get the game, uh, we're all going to want to play it. And not sure my wife is going to be up to the task of playing. So <laughs> I, I certainly may uh, bust out the webcam and, and look to play a Skype game or two, which right. we can definitely record and definitely put up on our YouTube channel. For sure. And um, that would be sweet, I think. When we do that, I call first game. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well, that's not fair because you guys live on the other side of North America, so I'll be at work and you guys get your stuff. (laughs) I'm just up extra late for you. Well, I'll just call it six. That's true. Do that, too. (laughs) That's probably the better plan. This game, if we've learned nothing else, this game is probably worth calling in sick next Wednesday. That's when I actually, like, as I work today, I was like, hmm, maybe I should just call in sick on Wednesday or ask for the day (laughs) off. But then I'd just be sitting at home, like, 
rolling the dice by myself, pretending, getting up and playing both teams. I'm going to observe Easter on Wednesday, so I'll be working on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, there's something else I wanted to, to say. Hopefully it'll come to me in the next few moments. Well, I'll, I'll, while you're thinking of that, I'll just interject by saying that if anybody wants to contact us, um, please feel free to do so at bachelorsofdice at gmail.com. Send us opinions, comments, what we're doing right, what we're doing horribly wrong, suggestions for topics, questions about the game, if we're not uh, going over things enough. Um, we, we did kind of gloss over the game in general because we're assuming that if you're listening to this podcast, you have an interest in the game already and probably know a little bit about it, but we can certainly do a quick recap of the game if, if anybody feels the need for that, although there's probably a lot of better sources for that right now between the Watch It Play videos and Tom Vassell video. Mm -hmm. But still, we're open to suggestion and question, and uh, as I mentioned early on, if anybody's interested in joining the podcast, please feel free, drop us a line. Yeah, and I think um, we kind of mentioned earlier in, the bit in our uh, podcast that we're all kind of, this is new territory, new frontier for us. So, yeah, if people have ideas or ways to make us more efficient or make us a little better or whatever, if suggestions, that would be really great to just have some suggestions. I mean, um, I know I'm, I'm always learning and liking, loving learning all this new tech and stuff, but I'm sure there's better ways to do some stuff that I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah, I look, I look forward to hearing all the things that I did wrong and actually listening to this and hearing all the stupid comments that I <laughs> made and all the ones that all the smart comments that I just forgot to make yeah right that's that's probably going to be the biggest thing for me <laughs> I can't wait for all the YouTube comments <laughs> that's going to be fun it's going to be amazing yeah I've, I haven't been a big uh, poster of YouTube but I've always wanted to and that's kind of I'm hoping this will be a launching pad for me to be able to start getting into that very cool well this is episode zero so I'm sure it's not going to be without its errors and omissions or whatever so yeah uh, you know, please grant us a little slack, and you know, if we think if you think we did a decent enough job, then join us again on episode one, which hopefully will follow in the next couple of weeks. And tell your friends, tell them to listen and play the game. Yes, we're trying to foster a, a really good, good community, good sized community, and good group of guys and 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 girls uh, to play this game because we're all really excited for it. Yeah, don't forget to bring it to work. Play on your lunch breaks. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. You have people at your work that'll play it with you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so lucky. I know. I'm, I'm pretty excited. All right. Well, I think uh, we'll close it out here unless anybody has any final comments. No, well, sounds good to me. Yep, all good. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to Episode Zero of the Bachelors of Dice podcast, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>